So our home was built in 1988, and as such it has all the oddities and design characteristics of something built in the late 80s. This carpet was actually put in prior to the house being listed for sale. Um, now, I don't know about you, but I don't know many houses that have carpet surrounding the fireplace. It doesn't seem like the best idea. And in this house, it's definitely not the most aesthetically pleasing. So once we had the carpet up, we started removing the tile from the hearth. In order to do this, I had to use a rotary hammer with a chisel bit. And this one here is actually built by Makita, in case you're wondering. Um, it was a bit of a tedious process, a little difficult to get up because the tile was attached to drywall, which was screwed down to the wooden base of the hearth. We actually ended up finding a great deal on some pergo laminate flooring. Now normally this flooring was priced at around $2.50 a square foot. We ended up finding this for $0.75 cents a square foot on clearance. We were a little hesitant taking on this project ourselves because this fireplace does have such an odd structure, um, let alone the fact that it is a double-sided fireplace. Now before we did any unrepairable damage, we wanted to make some small cuts to see what we were working with to see what was structural and what we could actually remove. In order to make some of the larger cuts, I used a reciprocating saw. Now this is nice not only because it cuts through the drywall, and the wood frame, but it also cuts through any old nails that are in the way. So once we removed what we needed to from the existing structure, we started rebuilding the structure the way that we wanted it to look. Now you, you can see that we removed some of the features that were jutting out of the fireplace. Um, we did this with the intent of making it a little bit more symmetrical, a little more modern looking. We also built this frame with the intent of mounting a TV on one side. With the new structure in place, we were ready to add our shiplap to the exterior of the fireplace. We used an 8 inch pine primed shiplap, which we cut to size with a miter saw and then attached using a brad nailer. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, but it was actually as simple as cutting, nailing, and then painting. To make things a little bit easier, I decided to move one of the electrical outlets that was at the base of the fireplace to a more central location where the TV was going to be mounted. I did this keeping in mind the need to keep the electrical wire away from the heat of the fireplace. For the top of the hearth, we were planning on replacing the existing tile with something a little bit more modern looking. We decided to pick up a 24 by 12 inch ceramic tile. You can see it kind of has a nice little marble look. Um, now keep in mind this is our first time ever laying tile, so keep that in mind watching the next part of the video. And as a side note, we did use a backer board as a barrier between the tile and the wooden frame of the hearth. If you noticed in the video, on the other half of the fireplace, we ran the shiplap all the way across. We did that to close off that gap that connected both halves of the fireplace. 
Now once that was closed off we put in some 8 inch plywood to make a little cubby area. We then added shelves for storage. You can see we have the TV mounted as well. Um, some of the finer details you'll see a little bit later. We added some corner molding to cover the exposed shiplap. We added a few other finishing touches that uh, you'll be able to see a little bit later as well. And finally, after a couple months of hard work, we have our finished product, which I don't think looks too bad for a couple of the amateurs. Hopefully you can see some of the finer details here. If you have any questions or comments or anything you would have done better, please let us know. We'd like to hear about it. If you'd like to see some more projects, feel free to subscribe and help us along the way. And good luck with your DIY projects.